Good evening and welcome to Freedom's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Center Valley, Pennsylvania, as we offer this worship service for Christmas Eve 2020. I'm glad that each and every one of you have chosen to tune in to our worship service tonight. Obviously, a very different format than what we would have hoped for, but something that is necessary for this year. So wherever you are joining us, whether you are within Pennsylvania or in a different state or perhaps an, an, even a different country, we welcome you here as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd also like to extend some special greetings to the young ones from our congregation whom I haven't seen. Oh, it's going on three quarters of a year now. I would imagine that some of you have probably grown taller than me by now. Please know that I miss you, I'm thinking about you, and I'm wishing you and your family a joy-filled holiday. I'm also glad that you have chosen to tune in tonight. Let us take some moments to enjoy the opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful.
please join me in the call to worship. God of unimaginable love, on the first Christmas, you became one of us. We celebrate your love for every person in every place and time. God of all humanity, you offered your peace to anyone who would be satisfied with your presence. We celebrate your peace in your church and accept your commission to share it in all the world. God of the shepherds, you announced your arrival among us to the poorest, the most humble. We celebrate your good news to each of us and to everyone right here where we are. God of the manger, you came to us through your son in a small and simple place. We celebrate your presence with us this day in this small place made glorious by your being in it. God of deliverance, you came to be one of us in order to deliver all of us. We celebrate your protection and mercy toward all who are sick or in trouble. God of birth, when you became as we are, you opened yourself to each of us, no matter who or what we are. We celebrate this day your kingdom and that we are welcome in it right now and always. Keep us close now and in the life to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this Christmas Eve comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult with dividing plunder. For you, the yoke of your burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tampering warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom 
he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now stay resp responsibly, Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. See, and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord your families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that there is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second reading comes from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce imp impiety and worldly possess passions in the present age to the lives and lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, it is he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all inequity and purify himself, a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the second chapter of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger 
because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom the Lord favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Since this is no ordinary Christmas Eve, I figured that my message for tonight wasn't going to be the ordinary fare either. So please feel free to listen in as I read a letter that I wrote to God. Dearest God, the Almighty, the Great I Am, how are you doing these days? I can't begin to imagine how you've kept your divine sanity these past 10 months with the pandemic and all the changes that have been wrought upon this big blue dot known as Earth. Yes, we're still spinning on our axis, but we seem a bit more tilted and out of whack. Who would have thought that in less than one trip around the sun, we'd see our whole way of living turned upside down and inside out? Here I am in a near empty sanctuary, listening to my own heartbeat instead of the songs of the angels. The only bells that I've heard lately is the doorbell at, at home announcing that the Amazon delivery person has left another package on our porch. I guess I will just have to imagine tiny tots with their eyes all aglow because between the wearing of the masks and the need to temporarily be shut down again, that youthful energy will simply have to wait until next year. Tensions are heightened, dear God, because everything is different and frustrating because it's all out of our control. Oh, the tree and the lights have been up for a couple of weeks now, oh Lord, but the cats and the puppy don't seem to appreciate them much. It's not, not quite the same when company cannot come and admire them. The neighborhood seems quiet. Everyone staying close to their home base instead of being out on the roads traveling or caroling and singing. We put a brand new Moravian star in our front window, but its light seems mostly to be for us not so much for guests. 
People ask me all the time if I'm ready for Christmas, which in secular terms translates to, have you put up all your Christmas decorations? Have you finished your Christmas shopping? Have you mailed your Christmas cards? Have you put on your calendar all the places that you are supposed to go? Are you ready for Christmas? Well, the short answers are yes, no, 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 and no. Journalists continue to report about the sick count and the death toll and the new variant strain of the virus that is now spreading. If only good news traveled as fast. My heart hurts, God, to know that so many families have been devastated by the effects of COVID, particularly those who have lost loved ones to the virus or to other medical conditions and were not permitted to be with them as they drew their last breath. I think too of the thousands in the medical profession who have relentlessly been doing a job that I never could have in the face of daily dangers. Many others have experienced negative effects of imposed isolation. We've been ripped apart by strife and our world seems more than a bit weary by it all. Society tries to impose a forced joy during this particular holiday, but that can be more hurtful than helpful. And yet in the midst of it all, dear Lord, in this oh so quiet night, I'm surrounded by your light. Tiny flames that conquer the darkness and my little corner of the world once again seems hopeful. Once again, I hear the reassuring message of the heavenly host to not be afraid, for there still is good news of great joy. Just as King Herod and his underlings were not able to stop the birth of the Savior over 2,000 years ago, dear Lord, neither can an invasive virus prevent your amazing divinity from entering into our humanity through this precious one called Emmanuel. You came most unexpectedly in a grotto meant to house animals, not to birth the savior of a world of the world. Amidst the warm breath of beasts and the pungent smell of hay, the carpenter assuming the role of midwife there was no fanfare from the religious or the political bigwigs, no email blast announcing your birth, no investigative reporters pointing cameras at the scene for the 11 o'clock news. You simply stuck your foot into the door of human history and quietly pushed it open so that we might have a foretaste of the kingdom. To those who are weary, you have promised rest. To those who feel guilt and shame, you provide redemption. To those who feel alone, you establish relationship. To those who feel like they are on the fringe, you invite them into your inner circle and call them beloved and friend. That really is the best gift of all. In the midst of the craziness and uncertainty that is known as 2020, your Christmas promise still comes in the form of the babe in Bethlehem 
who continues to overwhelm us with his love and envelop us in his light. So thank you for that, dear God. And please take good care of yourself or else we're all sunk. Say hello to the heavenly hosts for me. With love, your servant, Lisa.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word is revealed in a manger, in simple bread and wine. Come and meet Christ in this meal. I would now invite you, if you have sealed communion elements with you at home or some other form that you can partake of the sacrament. Please unseal the top so that you have access to the wafer. Please be assured that through this, your communion elements are blessed and consecrated. The body of Christ given for you. And you may unseal your cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and love now and always. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light and to the brightness of your rising. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who believes in me shall not remain in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us now join our prayers with those of the angels as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. 
O oh Lord, let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere, upon the mountaintops to the lowest valleys. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Indeed, heaven and nature sing joy to the world. We pray that you would give respite to flocks and fields and all those who tend to them. Come near to us in the beauty of this nighttime, the shining of the stars, and in the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. O oh Lord, the heavenly hosts sing peace on earth. Come quickly, we pray, to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all who are in their care. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those who are facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and all those who are without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Be a comfort to those who have lost children at any age. O oh Lord, the heavenly chorus sings glory to God in the highest. And we give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of our newborn Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this night through the word made flesh. Amen.